Hey everyone, this is Julia with the Mixology Talk podcast, episode number 70. Can you believe we're already at episode number 70? That is crazy. Well, this week we're going to be talking a little bit about bartender pranks. We were wandering around the, the bartender subreddit earlier this week, and there are some hilarious stories of silly requests and funny ideas for new folks who've joined your bar. But we're going to go a little farther than that and talk a little bit about some jokes you can play on your coworkers and some thoughts on when bar pranks go a little bit too far. So stick with us. So if you're in the restaurant business long enough, you're probably going to run into some pranks either in the receiving end or delivering them out. So we thought we'd kind of highlight a couple good ones that we've heard of, and we've done plenty of research, both personally and on the interwebs. Exactly. And if you're a, if you're the new guy at work, you may want to keep an eye out for these. Yeah, this might be a good heads up episode for you. Exactly, exactly. So we were, like I said in the intro, we were we were looking around Reddit for some good examples of tips for the new guy, and there are some really funny ones. But I had to start. I have to start with with your own favorite. Yeah, this is one I actually have done in the past, and it is to send a bar back or a new bartender out to the store and, you know, have a sense of urgency about it. Say, oh, my God, we're going to get buried tonight. Do me a favor. Go to the store and buy a thing of olive juice because (laughs) you you can't find it. But if you put that sense of urgency and kind of panic behind it, they want to. How often did that really work? I'd I'd say once or twice it worked. It was funny. Out of how many? I think once or twice. (laughs) (laughs) That is too funny. And I imagine if you if you had a good relationship with a nearby bar, you could probably do that there, too. Oh, that's even so much better. You can you have know, a lot of fun with that. Yeah, if there's a bar you hang out in after work or, you know, it's an industry bar, send them there. They'll know exactly what's going on, and they'll kind of roll with the punches and just kind of keep it going. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would just be gold. Absolute gold. There were a lot of different items that were sort of a similar type of prank. Uh, there's a long list, but definitely I mean, I've got to include some of my favorites. So these are things that you might send your new person to go and get, either from a store or from another bar. My personal favorite is ice mix. Oh, yeah. Where do you get ice mix from? Where do you get ice mix? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. So this, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This entire episode, I'm going to be cracking up because <laughs> I can see this absolutely happening behind any bar. You've probably seen a lot of this happen behind the bar. <laughs> Ice mix or ice machine fluid. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And you know, the the problem is you know that new bartender is really just trying to make a good impression and they're working hard and it's just terrible. Well, and it's a great introduction into your culture. If you're kind of lighthearted, you're a fun atmosphere, this is a really good way of kind of figuring out if they're going to be a good fit long term or if they're going to kind of... Be a sore sport. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But just, you know, have fun with it. Don't get too serious with it. But And don't let it go too far. Another one that, that uh, another type of prank that I saw a lot was telling people that they needed to drain the hot water from the coffee machine. Oh, which man. Which is <laughs> a problem so when your coffee machine has its own water line. I don't recommend this in California. We are in a drought still. Right. I know it's rained a little recently. We are still in a drought. But they'll be there for five minutes. I mean, and just sitting there for. And then the They're best so part dedicated. is I can imagine somebody coming up to them and saying, "What the hell are you doing, Tom? <laughs> oh man, this bartender asked me to drain the, the hot water out of the coffee machine, and you could just see their wah, eyes wah, roll. Wah. Yeah, like you're an <laughs> idiot. But they're just trying so hard. It'll only happen once. So, and before we get too far. The main reason we even did this podcast or this episode is because we cannot wait to hear some of the pranks that you guys have pulled at work. This yeah, is, there's got to be going to be amazing. There have so got to be some this. good ones. So definitely let us know in the comments. Uh, mixologytalk.com slash 70. And yeah, tell us some of your pranks. What are you sending people to the store for or to the bar next door? I, uh, I heard Guinness Whitener. Guinness Whitener. Yeah, and, and apparently the bar next door knows about it, and so they would always send them back with like a handful of salt. Oh, Oh, it's God. great. That it's great. <laughs> a squeegee sharpener. A squeegee sharpener. Keg rotator. Oh, uh, I heard both a bottle stretcher and bacon stretcher. Well... Bacon stretchener would be really important. Nobody wants to order unstretched bacon. But I could see this being like a team event where the chef comes out 
and ask like the new bartender or the bar back to go. <laughs> And ask it's a neighboring restaurant or a bar. It's all for bad. A bacon stretcher. There were a couple oh, ones. So there were a couple of good ones related to capturing air in various formats. One of my favorites was somebody who had to clear the stale air out of the freezer, and were and they they handed them a garbage bag. <laughs> I don't really know how that process works, but apparently this particular person was very dedicated, which I just really appreciate that. Like, you're like trying. I, like I said, it's just going to be me laughing this entire episode because I can see all these things happening. I'm, I'm literally crying right now, wiping the tears <laughs> away from my eyes. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, man. Hey, the air, the air gets stale. You gotta, oh, it, it does. You got to cycle it, you know? And where, where are you going to put it? I know that's the other thing. Like, where where are you gonna where, put it? Where are you gonna put the and air? You, you gotta put it in a garbage bag and, and throw and it how away. How long are they gonna be in there for? <laughs> Bringing the air out of the fridge <laughs> in a garbage bag. There was one about collecting the steam from the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> also with a garbage bag. <laughs> Apparently, when you're collecting vapors. <laughs> The garbage bag is really the way to go. I hope you guys are laughing as hard as I am because I'm <laughs> dying right now, as you can tell. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Not to mention left-handed corkscrew. Left <laughs> left-handed corkscrews. And of the course not. I mean, w- that's just prejudice if you don't have a left hand. Pre- 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 prejudice what? Pre- 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 <laughs> I don't think prejudice pre- is a word. It's totally prejudice. <laughs> oh man. Oh god. Anyway. And uh, and a Corona D limer. A Corona D limer. Once the lime is in there, you got you got to get it out somehow, you know. Oh, maybe maybe man. you use the left-handed corkscrew to get the get the lime out. I'm oh, not sure. Oh God, it's so funny. Oh, so there've like got to be some more good ones out there. Definitely, definitely let us know. So th- this okay, this was my personal favorite. All right, and it, it's kind of like a training task, but it's also a little bit of a prank and a lesson learned as well. And that is where you show the new bartender how to make a rum and coke. Okay. And you put the rum in the shaker, and you put the coke in the shaker, and you put the ice in the shaker. Oh, no. And you have him shake the cocktail. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? And the lesson is never to shake pressure <laughs> carbonated is... ingredients. Well, it'll get you. <laughs> oh, I, li- I like that one. It's a twofer. It's a training opportunity. It is. It is a training opportunity. And it's opportunity. an opportunity to get all your clothes cleaned. Covered in rum and coke. <laughs> Sent to the dry cleaner. So one of the other stories that I heard that I really enjoyed was a bartender on daytime had a lot of downtime prepping and all that stuff, and a new bartender was coming on shift after him. Um, like a new, brand new bartender, or, or just a somebody different? somebody to relieve him. So he was very bored, and he had a lot of things at his disposal. So one mm-hmm. of the things that he did was cover a martini glass in saran wrap. Like, really well done. So, you know, cut off all the edges, all the frayed edges, and oh, all that no. stuff. And it doesn't really stop there because you can imagine what would happen, right? So this he was actually pretty creative. And we saw this one on the subreddit. So what he did was uh, he sat down at, on the other side of the bar for a drink. But he buried that martini glass halfway through the fridge. So the That's bartender so would not get to it until he was in the weeds. So he just sat there and That's waited and hung out, you know, talk, talk shop and all that stuff and just relax. And then... It all happened. Just pouring. Oh, uh, I think he so said it rotten. with a Cosmo right over the top of it. And you could just see. You know what's going to happen. I can imagine it. But it's just Brilliant. stuff like that is Brilliant. so funny. evil. Yeah, exactly. And it's not going to cost. I mean, you know, you're going to have to remake the cocktail. And there's going to be a little bit of a mess. <laughs> but it's really <laughs> lighthearted. Well, as long as they're not too much in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Another one I heard, which is a little bit, uh, th- this is very creative. Again, also from Reddit. I, I, I think this is where all the all the ridiculous pranks go. Um, and this is if somebody asks for a Coke. And what you do is, is you, you, for whatever reason, you send them away, ask them to get you something or something. And then you, you get a shot glass and you fill it with something that is not Coke. This example said Tabasco sauce, but really you could do anything. Get yeah. the, get that shot glass, fill it with something that is not Coke, cover it with saran wrap, and poke a straw through it. Then put that whole thing in the bottom of a pint glass, fill the pint glass with ice and Coke. Oh, I, clever. Super clever, right? Yeah. This is I was really impressed with the ingenuity here. And then when the person takes a drink, they're going to be sipping out of that 
sort of hidden shot glass, and they're going to be very, very surprised. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll let you choose how evil you want to be on this one. I think Tabasco is pretty evil, but you could you could do Spin something like some Jaeger. Ketchup and mustard or something oh, like that. Oh, brutal. <laughs> I was thinking like Jaeger, because that would still be a pretty awful surprise. But not at for least most part. Not, not for a lot of bartenders. That's true. Yeah, that's they'd true. be like, ooh, thank you. <laughs> surprise but you could really have a lot of fun and get really creative on how you guys play with each other at work but still be you know really lighthearted and not take it too far right exactly so you were telling me that one of your favorite things to do at work is to torture people with music oh in the best possible way though like is it though it, it's so much fun it really is because especially like when you're slow you know, and we're in the middle of February now, so we're most everyone's pretty slow. But you would play a game, and everybody kind of knows the game. Okay. And basically, you would start singing a song that was so infectious that you could not help but sing along with it. So and does it, it just sort of stop? It just sort of spreads all over the restaurant. It's like everywhere, you, and you just kind of sit back and watch it unroll. <laughs> it's so funny. And Don't lie, you were spending your days singing Like a Virgin, weren't you? Oh, totally. Oh, it's such a good song. <laughs> I mean, that, that one will get you... Actually, I learned this one from a co-worker, and after after she taught it to me, I was like, oh, that's so good. It's um, a great harmless prank that will still drive somebody crazy. Oh, yeah, totally. And it'll stick with them the entire day, and after they get off their shift, you know, they're walking home, and they're still and they're singing the damn of you. song. Exactly. So there's some good ones out there, though. But you, you got to think of these really catchy songs that you always hear about. Maybe like like Don't Stop Believing." Oh, by Journey. It's so good. That's a good one. Because you can't. Everybody knows the words. They've it's heard true. it a thousand times. It's true. And they just start singing along. And you just watch it spread through the restaurant. Oh, there's so many good ones. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you got to do. What's that? Rick Astley. Oh. Never going to give you up. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing on this podcast. That's bad for everybody. I'm going to let you down. <laughs> oh, don't lie, everyone. You totally have that stuck in your head right now. And you're going to have it all day long. <laughs> you just lost all of our listeners. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> one of my personal favorites, this is kind of like the, the last straw. And it is the final countdown. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you know you're singing it. You make a... Yeah, I totally am now. You make an excellent synthesizer. Sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but this is uh, another thing you can do and get everybody involved. And it becomes this little competition. It could be a lot of fun. You catch people like tapping their fingers. And you can play this with your regulars at the bar. And, you know, just you'll be surprised. Like they'll come back a couple of days afterwards and go, oh, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So it's a, it's a really fun game. I like that. that. It's, not, it's not too evil. That's good. That's right. good. Another one I heard, and this one I'm not sure how well it would work, but supposedly what you can do is you can just sort of give a waiter a couple sheets of tinfoil and basically say, like, that table over there requested this, and they're just going to, like, walk over, and it'll be super <laughs> awkward. That's basically the extent of the prank. I found it, like, hilarious in its simplicity. So the way I see this played out is you have the waiter, a couple pieces of tinfoil, they walk over there to the table, they hand it to them, <laughs> the, the customer looks at the waiter the waiter looks at you and just kind of like what the hell man <laughs> and then he finally sounds recognizes amazing. what's going on it sounds amazing I, like this. I can see that play that well I don't see anything wrong I don't see anything wrong with this well, that's that's I think all that we found in terms of funny pranks. But I did want to just close this episode up with a couple more thoughts because there are some other pranks that I've heard of that perhaps are not quite so not quite so funny uh, the trouble with pranks is that there's always a line when it's really not funny anymore. Right. I saw a, this was funny, YouTube video the other day of a of a, a guy crashing in somebody's windshield with a baseball bat and then laughing and saying, oh no, it's just a prank. Well, that's what this is. You know, it's it's not necessarily just a prank. So there's a couple examples that I saw, one of which is, is kind of on the line, I think it's too far. And what it is is... is this this guy, uh, basically, he does this as a means of training. He'll do a couple of shifts with a new bartender, and then on a, on a night he knows will be really busy, he'll leave for a cigarette break and tell that bartender to call him if he needs any help. Well, problem is he doesn't leave for a cigarette break. He leaves for a couple hours. Oh, no. So this poor bartender is in the weeds on a busy night on a new bar, and the test is supposed to be whether or not he calls. Okay. 
I don't know. I think it's a little mean spirited. I kind of feel like that's that's not training anymore. That's trial by fire. That is definitely trial by fire. And there is, I mean, that's too I, far I would, for me. Yeah, okay. yeah, I can see. I can see both sides of it because you're you're going to get to that point where you have to learn and talk about a way of just exposing you to to like instant. Oh, well, th- there's no question. I mean, sink or swim. But yeah, that's. I can see that being a little too far. Maybe like like come back right when it's like like peer in the window and watch for when it gets busy and they need help i don't know maybe something like that but if you're truly in the weeds how are you going to go pull out your cell phone and start making a phone call yeah and the the thing that i i kind of think about with this one is the person that suffers is the guest exactly exactly they're getting terrible service they're getting you know they have to suffer for this training opportunity and it doesn't seem like it would be a good thing it's bad for the term. restaurant. It's bad right. for the bar. It's 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 not a good training opportunity because, frankly, it's just going to be a traumatic experience. Yeah, I could see that. That yeah. bartender is just going to struggle. He he's set up to fail. Right. And I think that's the the short and long of it is that, is that they really have no opportunity to be successful. So yeah. in my mind, this one's a little bit too far. I think there are perhaps like like versions of this that could be good training opportunities, and it is absolutely a good lesson to ask for help when you need it. Right. But. This isn't the way to do it. Yeah, there's better ways to test somebody's character. I would definitely agree with that. Definitely not at the expense of the guest, too. I agree, definitely. Another one that I heard, and this is this is a scary one for me, and that is, according to the internet, if you have a customer that you don't like or somebody you don't like, if you drop just a couple of drops of Visine into their drink, ha ha, they will have to run to the bathroom with a terrible case of diarrhea. Yeah, I've heard this one. This is kind of one of those wives' tales that you hear just you know, word of mouth through the industry and all that stuff. But there is a pretty serious drawback to this. It is, first of all, not funny. Second of all, it's not limited to ha-ha funny case of diarrhea. Somebody can, you can literally kill somebody by doing this. That's one, one of the possible side effects is diarrhea. Another is comas. Another is, like, really serious issues with blood pressure and all sorts of other things. But absolutely death is a possibility. This is not funny. It's not worth risking it. And frankly, it's not worth risking lots of time in jail. Right. I don't care how mean that customer is. It's not funny. Yeah. So this is definitely a case of things just gone way too far. You know, even if the intention is just to, to mess with somebody, this is one of the things I, I personally believe in in the food and restaurant business is you don't mess with people's food or drinks. I'm with you. You just don't. I'm with you. I think it undermines the industry. It's not funny. It, it's really too far. Yeah. I guess I guess earlier on, though, if you think about it, my, my suggestion about the shot glass hidden in a glass of Coke, you could argue is kind of messing with somebody with food, say though. I will that a customer, you just don't mess with their That's food or drink. That's a good point. And uh, to a certain extent, you know, coworkers and all that stuff, but... There's a big difference between Definitely. Tabasco and something life-threatening. Right, exactly. So, you know, word's going to get out. Even if it does just go the way it's supposed to. Quote, unquote. Um, then, you know, word's going to get out. Awful. You're just You're not really doing a lot for your reputation, and it just kind of sucks. And also, I mean, the best case scenario here is that somebody gets an awful case of diarrhea. That is horrible. Right. That's exactly. not funny. There's, like, there's a lot better ways also, to handle Also, come on, any seriously, kind of who cleans the bathroom? Right. Like, you guys you're do. really not doing yourself <laughs> right. a favor there. It's a good point. Like, yeah. come on. It's definitely a good point. I also heard a story. This is this is a different kind of prank, but also, frankly, in my opinion, mean spirited. And this was a, a case of somebody who didn't like the manager who did inventory. And what they did is they, they literally hid several cases of booze from the stock room while the manager was doing inventory, put them back the next day, and then called out the manager for doing a bad job after he returned them to the stock room. Uh, that's pretty terrible. It's terrible. Well, somebody could get fired for that, too. And he did. And uh, which The worst part is that this per- that's what this person was trying to do. He was trying to get that manager fired. Now, I think the, the point of this is, you know, you may be proud of yourself for finding a creative way to, to, to you know, a means to an end that you were looking forward to, but this this is not... This is not being a, a, a good member of our industry. I think that we, as an industry, we have to help each other. It's hard enough as it is. And I think this kind of stuff, it undermines the it, it undermines what we have. And so, I, I don't know. I just think it's much, much too far. It, if you want somebody's job, then work hard. Earn it. Yeah. No, I agree. Totally. And, I mean, we're all in this together. So, you know, this is something we have to go to work every single day. 
and we have to have a good time. This is part of the job. This is what attracts a lot of us to this to this industry. It's part of surviving, I think, is having fun with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. So you got to have that balance, right? You know, when you're at work, you're at work, but you can also have a good time as well. So just, you know, have fun. Just don't take it too far. Don't get to that point where things are just kind of mean and rotten. It's unnecessary. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, have a good time. And um, I'm going to leave you on one last fun one. You uh, saved your favorite for last, oh, didn't you? Oh, this is, this is so good, especially at craft bars. Oh, man, this is so good. This is a good one. So replace all of the eggs in the fridges for your sours or however you do it with hard-boiled eggs oh my gosh i love that one <laughs> that is gonna be so funny right. or maybe no no no. replace one egg oh that's even better with a hard-boiled yeah, egg. right yeah See, like that's that's not mean-spirited at all but it will be hilarious. so funny it's, oh my it'll God. be absolutely hilarious all right everyone thanks so much for joining us once again do me a favor leave us a note over at mixologytalk.com slash 70 and uh, let us know like what what are some of your favorite pranks that you have behind your bar i I would love to hear all of these good spirited ones the funny ones that don't hurt anyone that's the good stuff yeah let's let's take some best practices out there oh no (laughs) (laughs) and spread spread the love around a little bit exactly and before i forget what was that song that we were gonna get never stuck in everyone's head Oh, man. You got to pick one. <laughs> the final <laughs> countdown. <laughs> Have a good week, everyone. <laughs> Cheers. Final countdown. That was amazing. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.